I feel that compared to other cities when I travel, I do a little bit of research on them. And with Berlin, I wanted to come fresh and not really knowing and allowing myself to <laughs> be explored by the city and also to explore the city from a fresh uh, point of view. Um, and just like get lost in it. And by getting lost in it, I kind of like found myself and I also found my own version of Berlin. It has been a great experience because first of all you are like in an environment with a lot of people of or a lot of con different countries and a lot of different cultures at the time so you're experiencing uh, art in a way that you feel like in home but at the same time you are with these people from all over the world there's people that are doing the same thing that you're doing and meeting people that really does that thing here in berlin berlin had Uh, has a very particular history, and that history is, is a, uh, attracts quite a lot of people. It has a, it, it is it is a very lively place. It's a very multi multicultural place. It's a, it's an open place, and there's a, there's an, a, an atmosphere that uh, facilitates creative work. Picture Berlin was started in 2009. We ran our first session in 2010. Basically, the structure of Picture Berlin is that it's a hybrid artist residency art academy which means it's a very intensive program. It's a six-week program, usually happens in the summer. It feels like it passes so fast, because every week there's more things, there's more people to meet, there's more presentations of your practice and other people's practice, and it's this whirlwind of creative energy and dialogue and time to spend, not only looking at your own work in terms of how other people see it, but also understanding what it is that you're looking for in, in work. The program is structured around artist walks, studio visits, group meals, multiple exhibitions, and work reviews on the weekends as well. In the residency, it's also a chance to, to be in a, in a group experience. Um, so, for example, Picture Berlin gives this um, wonderful chance uh, to have so much feedback on your work. And I think that's also something that's really hard to get if you're working as an artist only like focused on, on your project and sometimes it's really hard to get feedback from other people and this is like a, I think like a, a perfect opportunity to get further in your own artistic practice. So more than just showing your work and learning to talk about your practice but also to be inspired that there are so many people working in this industry who make it work and are enthusiastic and in interested and they will ask you more questions and through the questions that they ask you you kind of find out a bit more about what it is you want to look at next. The artist walk in search of the miraculous happens the very first day of the program and for in many ways that walk actually sets the tone for the entire program. It gives the residents an opportunity to see six or seven different neighborhoods within Berlin and to be led through those neighborhoods by different artists who most typically live in those neighborhoods that they're touring. It's a lot of fun. I love to do the walk. I love to hear the different questions that come up. And, and as I say in the walk, I really also love my area of vetting. And I like to show the people that there is a different side of Berlin, because vetting is so different, and especially the Soldina Keats. And so I really get a lot out of it as well. And uh, I think it's always funny to walk people around this little neighborhood and, uh, and yeah, show them what, what it's all about. But the guards that are guard, guarding this checkpoint, they haven't watched West German news. Like, you can and go from the, the east to the west to, to the New Berlin, to the things that are growing and the change that are evolving in the city. So you can get a little bit of everything in one day. We got to see these really interesting parts of the city I would never have seen without that tour. Um, so it was really, that was really special for me. So this is the uh, western part of Berlin. So saying that like when the wall was still up, this was this kind of island uh, in the middle of the communist world. But of course, to understand the place, you have to kind of, you see what you have around you. But also there's the other part which you don't see, which is like maybe history and uh, other aspects like sound, for example. I'm going to start now with the 20s, 1920s, going back now to the history. 
Yeah, I mean, then this period ended with the, the Nazis getting into power, of course, yeah, they stopped it all, they kind of closed all those places down in the street, and it was finished. Um, in, a, in a globalized art context, it becomes increasingly common for artists to want to develop their practice further and also to have the opportunity to work alongside other artists and critics and curators in the field. And um, I think also in the field of contemporary art, it, um, it's becoming increasingly common that artists undertake residencies. Also, it also as a kind of holiday from their everyday practice because if they're based in a, in a studio in, I don't know, London or South Africa or whatever, they, they're then allowed to leave their everyday surroundings to come to Berlin, for example, and to work in, in the context like of this residency. Music, they wouldn't use normal instruments. They use like metal sheets and, and, and tubes and whatever else, power tools. I'm gonna to give an artist talk. I'm gonna talk about my work. Um, some of which is here in the studio, some of which uh, I have documentation of, and then we'll have a dinner together. The main point is Berlin does have um, an art scene that differs to a certain extent um, to the art scenes of, let's say, Sao Paulo or, or London, and so people who want to be part of this program also are usually interested to get um, a specific look about um, um, contemporary Berlin art and artists. Today um, we're sitting in my um, garden, which is also where I have my atelier, my studio. Um, it's um, on one of the oldest Kleingarten communities, colonies in Berlin. It's 150 years or so old. I took on this place about six months ago um, after studying sculpture in the UK um, for my bachelor's. I um, I actually went to live in New Zealand where I um, worked on organic farms and built organic houses and, and did a lot of gardening and then when I went back to the UK um, I was a gardener for a couple of years alongside my artistic practice. Objects through the passing of time is entirely true. The Curatorial Marathon is actually called They Shoot Horses, Don't They?, which references a 1920s book with the same title by Horace McCoy to talk about the dance marathons of the 1920s, one of the only ways that people earned money during that time. So taking that idea into account, we invite nine, ten curators who are working in a variety of institutions, galleries, and project spaces to come and speak about their practice for a half an hour. And then the second part of the marathon is they do one-on-one -on -one portfolio reviews with all of the residents in the program. So it's this tremendous um, exposure to curation as a concept and what the residents quickly find out is there are so many diverse ways that people curate and the approach to research and the approach to ideas is developed in, in, a, in a really fluid way depending on which curator you're talking to and working with. There are multiple exhibitions during the summer program. The first exhibition usually happens two or three days into the program. So the residents bring work with them and typically they are making work about what they imagine Berlin to be, this idea of picturing Berlin. What is Berlin to them? And can they make images about Berlin in their hometown? The last exhibition is an opportunity for them to show their work in progress that they've made through their time in Berlin. But the most exciting part of that second exhibition is usually Usually they're working with a Berlin-based curator. When I was listening to the uh, to the artist presentations um, that happened uh, two or three times during the, the process of the of Picture Berlin, I noticed that a lot of artists were um, looking at communication. It's been changing my life, really. It has um, just the art we've seen, the people we've talked to. You know, be able to share ideas with you know Joachim and Wolf, like the other people that we've, the artists that and the curators that have been well established to help us like mold our way in our journey artistically has been really eye-opening, and I really like that. Tell two things, two sides, or maybe make it four sizes. So I thought I must change color, but I I don't know. For some reason, I really. 
into like using bright color. So I was experimenting different color, and I actually this color wasn't my choice. It's a uh, two layer of the image put together, and the the one is the original color, and the other is weird color like purple and the blue. And then when they blend together, it comes like this. Meeting all those people from all around the world and looking at their work and, and uh, being engaged in a serious conversation about the respective person's work, this is something that keeps your brain alive. And this is this is one of the big personal advantages of of, of teaching the discussion with constantly changing groups and with constantly changing questions is something that uh, keeps you young and healthy. I like that. I thought it was really nice to have the diversity of um, the international artists to meet and kind of hear about you know their lives in like China or Costa Rica yeah so it was fantastic yeah I think I really very much enjoyed the chance to meet people who are also trying to do what I'm trying to do even if it's that we do completely different practices that the only thread there is that we in some way use photography really the practices of everyone here is very different and we've all lived in different places and had different experiences but in the end we have the same similar feeling that we want to get what's in our minds out into the world and express something about what it means to be human living now and to be able to talk to this huge you know it's a large group of people and work alongside them and see them move on with their work along with moving on with my own has been an invaluable experience to move huge leaps with my work as well as being a person living in a new place it's been excellent that's my favorite thing